Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in this month's lecture series of the Philippine Geographical Society. Today's talk centers on how photo voice is used as a community-based participatory tool in identifying gaps and coming up with strategies to make barangay disaster risk reduction plans more inclusive. My name is TJ Cipriano, one of the MORD members of PGS, and I will be your official moderator for today's lecture series. Before we officially begin our program, I wish to go over some house rules governing our lecture series. Please be reminded to keep your mics on mute mode during the discussion to avoid unnecessary background noise. Also, please note that this lecture is being recorded for documentation purposes. We would like to encourage everyone to actively participate in our discussion by typing in your questions, comments, and or reactions in the Zoom chat box. All of these will be addressed during our open forum later. And before we end our meeting, we would like to request our participants to turn on their respective cameras, if possible, for our group photo. Thank you very much. Now to give his opening remarks, please welcome the President of the Philippine Geographical Society, Professor Eman Garcia. Thank you, Tij. Um, isang magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Welcome to the seventh PGS lecture series we have this year. As we all know, the PGS lecture series is a monthly gathering wherein we feature a specific geographical undertaking in the Philippines. The PGS LS is co-sponsored by the UP Department of Geography. For this afternoon, we will be introduced to yet another community-based and participatory method for identifying disaster risk strategies at the barangay level aimed at eliciting inclusivity in disaster risk reduction and management, the speaker will highlight practical findings of a project um, employing this methodology in certain barangays in Pasig and Quezon City. I am equally excited to hear this presentation because this initiative is part of a project collaboration that the PGS has been collaborating with Salikhaing Collective since last year. For our usual word cloud, Keywords generated from the registration includes inclusive, echo, grassroots, people, story, flexible, and empowerment. Other words include creativity, participant, resilience, and beauty. I hope we can have our speaker relate these keywords to his um, lecture later on. Muli, maraming salamat for joining us on behalf of the Philippine Geographical Society and the UP Department of Geography. Welcome to our seventh PGS lecture series for 2022. All right, thank you very much, Sir Eman. I am sure that our virtual audience is looking forward to today's talk. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker for today's lecture series. Our speaker is a freelance researcher focused on studies about disaster risk reduction and the environment. Apart from being a freelance photographer and communications consultant for humanitarian organizations, he specializes in designing and conducting photo voice projects, a participatory action research approach that empowers communities to document their own realities using still cameras. Currently based in his hometown in Baguio City, he is the current project manager of the Lahat Dapat Toolkit for Inclusive DRR Innovation Project, an initiative funded by ELHRA and their Humanitarian Innovation Fund. He, he is also currently finishing his Master's in Environmental Science and Management from UP Los Baños to talk about his lecture entitled Using Photo Voice as a Community-Based Participatory Tool in Developing Inclusive Barangay Disaster Risk Reduction Strategies we are privileged to welcome Mr. Juan Miguel Torres. Please give him a virtual round of applause by clicking the clapping emoji here in Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, hope everyone can see my, my screen yeah, and can hear me well. Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. My screen just froze right now. Yeah. Okay, 
So, <clears throat> muli, uh, good afternoon everybody. So, my name is Juan Miguel or Boyet. Some uh, the colleagues know me as Boyet. And I'll be discussing uh, one of the tools that we're using in our project, no? uh, namely the Lahat Dapat project. Uh, so, I'm focusing on photo voice and uh, being it being as a tool, community-based participatory tool in developing a disaster risk reduction strategies that are more uh, inclusive. No? So let me get into it. So just to give a short background uh, about the project. So again, as Sir Eman stated earlier, so it's a collaboration between the Philippine Geographical Society and the uh, Salikhain Collective. So Salikhain Collective is an art, collect art and research collective based in Quezon City which conducts uh, different participatory and community-based uh, art, uh, art projects and research projects all over the Philippines. Yeah, we're also partnering with, for this particular project, we're also partnering with the ACAP PWD Federation uh, in Pasig City. So they're also our partners. They assist us in uh, the logistics and inviting uh, members from their organization to attend our activities. So this project is uh, an innovation project. So it is supported by ELRA uh, based in uh, the Netherlands, uh, also with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Netherlands. So it's an innovation project uh, which started back in 2016. So this uh, topic I'll be talking about today is uh, actually our phase two. So the phase one started uh, in 2016 and we were uh, given the chance to scale up scale up our, our innovation into phase two. So uh, we came up with the project because we recognize that uh, uh, when it comes to disasters and persons with disabilities, uh, there's, uh, uh, it is very important for them to be uh, considered in all aspects of the disaster risk reduction and management uh, uh, cycle. No? So we recognize that people with disabilities are often excluded from disaster management and risk reduction processes and are particularly at risk no, in terms of marginalization and discrimination and as a result of exclusionary policies and practices by communities and humanitarian agencies. And when it comes to mortality rates in disaster also, uh, persons with disabilities die in far higher percentages of the population than other people. That is why uh, it is very important that when it comes to planning or coming up with disaster risk reduction plans that persons with disabilities uh, become involved in the planning processes. Because we also believe that many people with disabilities have the skills and experiences and other capabilities that can assist them in disasters. No? So because we have uh, oftentimes there is a stereotype that when uh, people with disabilities uh, automatically we should you know help them, you know? we should assist them in times of disasters. But uh, it should also be recognized that they also have their own capacities. No? They also have their own needs. They also have their own skills that can also improve no? the entire community uh, plans when it comes to reducing disaster risk. So uh, well, that is why it is important that we get uh, feedback from them. Uh, we get their inputs when it comes to planning for disasters. So this is the Lahat Dapat Toolkit. No? So we came up with the toolkit. So it is composed of different uh, projects or different activities that uh, explores and presents uh, creative ways of engaging persons with disabilities in disaster risk reduction planning. So these are some of the tools uh, that we have at the moment. So we have developed an online game. So it's Lahat Dapat or Lahat Pwede online game which you can play uh, online through using Zoom and uh, Sir Eman knows a lot about this because he was also one of who developed this uh, this game uh, with the team. So it's a Jeopardy, uh, Jeopardy-like game, quiz B like game, wherein people uh, can provide inputs and uh, ideas about how they can make their uh, plans more inclusive. So we also developed a maps and cards uh, for DRR card game. So it's uh, physical physical card game that uh, community members can play and it can draw out uh, experiences and inputs about you know inclusivity experiences about uh, um, uh, the vulnerable sectors in the community and uh, other uh, inputs about how they can improve uh, their disaster reduction 
management strategies. We also have geonarratives mapping, which is uh, for this particular project was facilitated by Sergio. Uh, so it's a counter mapping uh, activity wherein it also draws experiences from the people in the community about you know how they experience disasters and how they deal with them through uh, this uh, this form of mapping which they draw through drawings no, and other art uh, related activities but the focus of this uh, topic for today is the photo voice so the photo voice is a participatory uh, photography project no it involves the use of still cameras and uh, photography no for people to document the realities in their communities related to inclusivity and reducing disaster risk. So what is Photo Voice? No? So it's a community-based participatory research developed by Caroline Wang and Mary Ann Burris in 1992. So relatively, it's a, uh, in terms of research Boyette, methodology. excuse me, Boyette. Boyette, may I interrupt you? Are, are you. are you showing us the slides? Because it's staying the same slide oh, okay, from the very okay. beginning. Okay, sorry. I'm not sure if if you're actually moving it. Yeah, I, lang... I'm, yes, po, I'm moving it. Uh -oh. Let me share. Uh, let me re-share. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Yan po. Uh, can you see uh, the screen now? Oh, okay, ta, pero hindi yung full screen. Pero kung if that is much better for you, okay lang naman siguro. How about, about this one po? Okay, yeah, that works better. Can you see it moving? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. Uh, just a quick run through again. So, yeah, this is the uh, collaborators and the uh, members of the project. And what I mentioned earlier about uh, why uh, we recognize, uh, the things we recognize about the project. So this is the online game. Uh, and then this is the sample of the card game. And this is the geonarratives mapping, which we also did with Sergio. And our focus for today is the photo voice. So yeah. So again, it was developed in 1992. And it was first used to empower the silenced rural women in Yunnan province in China. So it was uh, started as a uh, project uh, related to health uh, health issues for the women, rural women in China. No? So they wanted to understand uh, what they were going through, uh, especially the women, because in China, in this particular research, uh, there were more of the uh, stay-at-home women. No? So the, the researchers wanted to understand how the uh, how the community, especially the women, uh, are uh, how are they in terms of their health. No? So this was the first research that used the photo voice approach. So from there, it branched out into different uh, forms, no? and not just research. So it was also it can also be used as a planning tool. No, it creates awareness on certain issues and problems, and and, and can bring people to action. And since it involves photography, photo voice is considered also as an art form, no? so a community-based art form. So photo voice utilizes participants' creativity because they take photos, no? imagination, and perspectives to generate data for community planning initiatives. So it's more of a visual way to gather data, which is community-based and participatory. Yeah. So here are some of the samples of the, uh, some uh, photo voice projects that uh, we did and I facilitated. So one of them is the Island Film Project. So this was conducted in G1 Eastern Summer uh, in two barangays where they documented the eco-DRR practices or natural-based uh, resource knowledge in the communities. No? So using cameras as well. So this is, was one in uh, Dingalan Aurora where they documented uh, their capacities and vulnerabilities when it comes to disasters. No? Uh, specifically typhoons so the some of the participants here were the dumagats so they also used uh, film cameras for this project and this was another one in binakod paumbong uh, bulacan which was uh, flood prone no? so they documented the 
also vulnerabilities and capacities with regards to uh, managing flood in their community. And we also did one in Pachitan in Indonesia, which is a tsunami-prone and earthquake-prone community or barangay. Uh, so they also documented uh, the realities with regards to how they cope, uh, their strategies in coping with these hazards. And uh, we also tried it online. No? So for the phase one of our Lahat Dapat project, we conducted a photo voice project, which we did online. But instead of using film cameras, the participants here used uh, their mobile phones no? so to document uh, the barriers that they, that they are facing uh, during the COVID pandemic. So the participants here were persons with disabilities living in Pasig, Quezon City, and uh, UP. UP village. So these are the main objectives when conducting a photo voice project. No? So to capture data from community members that reflects the strengths and challenges connected to the place. It, the photo voice project also expand awareness and dialogue around issues connected to a specific community. It hopes to bridge policymakers and community members to improve issues and topics impacting communities through the photo voice results. And uh, through the results, uh, through the project, the voice project, it hopes to strengthen the local capacity of community members to take action. No? So again, it's a community-based action, re action research. So at the end of the research project, there should be some sort of action or plan that uh, should come up no? and topics that impact their lives. So for the purpose of this project, photo voice was used to identify different capacities and vulnerabilities of the community members that are related to inclusivity and reducing their disaster risk to different hazards. So our partner communities for this project are those communities uh, that are situated in the West Valley Fault. So part of the uh, proposal for this innovation project was to work on uh, strategies, uh, DRR strategies that could assist you know, uh, in the impending big one, no? the earthquake that uh, could happen in our lifetime. So we partnered with uh, Barangay Pansol in Peasant City, just right uh, beside uh, UP Town Center, uh, Barangay Bagong Ilog, and Barangay Ugong in Pasig City. So the methodology, no? so there are 10 participants each per barangay. Uh, we conducted a half-day basic photography workshop. So this includes a lecture on how to use uh, photos to tell stories, a short lecture on photo ethics, no? and a short lecture on DRR and also inclusivity and why is it why it is important. So the participants here are different members of the community. So we have uh, representatives from the Persons with Disabilities group, uh, barangay representatives, uh, single parents. We also have some youth who attended and took part in the activity. So they were given, uh, each of them were given a single use camera. No? So the film cameras with 36 ex exposures, so 30 was used for the project, meaning they doc, uh, used the photos to document the topic of the project. And the six, the six exposures was used for general use. No? So they could use it for their child's graduation, for their family pictures, because we give them prints afterwards. And uh, we found that uh, uh, getting pictures or prints is not really common uh, nowadays. And it's uh, very... Uh, different yung feeling no kapag may hawak ka na print na photo so again it's one way to also to engage or to uh, uh, buy in you know kumbaga yung buy in ng community members to join this activity kasi magka-receive sila ng prints of photos that they took so it took uh, we gave them two weeks to take photos of vulnerabilities and capacities in their community related to inclusivity and DRR so after two weeks the cameras were collected uh, it was processed and stamped and printed uh, into photos. So once the, we got the photos, we uh, went back to the community and gave it to them. And then there was a one-day like a F FGD, sorry, FGD uh, uh, type of uh, workshop and uh, lecture uh, wherein the uh, community members each presented or shared the inputs or the pictures that they took. So... Uh, they discussed why it was how it was related to the uh, research topic, which was how is it a vulnerability or how how was it a capacity 
related to inclusivity and DRR. So after that, uh, after they discussed, uh, they clustered, they clustered the photos, they set it into themes, and we were able to develop an action plan per community. So here are some of the uh, some of the results of the photo voice activities in Pencil Quezon. No? So these were already arranged into themes that were done by the communities themselves. So as we see, uh, they took photos of uh, access roads that were narrow and were filled with debris. And there were also problems with drainage. No? So they were particularly uh, very particular with these photos because uh, they said that when it comes to fire or hazard, these are really big issues for the community, especially for people with disabilities because they will have a difficult time to evacuate in case something uh, like a fire or a flood uh, happens in their community. So again, this is also the same uh, photos from the from Pansol, uh, highlighting the narrow pathways and the debris uh, along those pathways. So they also took photos of their capacities no, when it comes to DRR. So most of them took photos of uh, existing wheelchair ramps in their, uh, uh, in their barangay infrastructure. And they also took photos of uh, the different um, uh, transportation vehicles when it comes for, uh, in times of rescue. So there are also uh, open spaces where they were they identify as evacuation areas and the important uh, infrastructure in their communities, for example, the Barangay Health Center. So for Barangay Ugong, it's the same. No? So uh, we, they also highlighted the narrow pathways in their communities no? so, and how it becomes problematic in times of uh, disaster. So here are some of the alleyways and uh, dif difficult access to these areas. We also highlighted uh, how it would be difficult for physically impaired uh, community members to access these sites. And they also highlighted uh, electrical wiring in their areas uh, as a fire hazard. And as for, for their capacities, they took photos of the existing uh, vehicles and existing equipment. So we have a picture of a wheelchair here and evacuation signs that are existing in the community so they also have a boat in barangay ugong which they also use they can identified as a potential uh, rescue vehicle no, uh, in water because they are near uh, river no, Pasig river so uh, in barangay bagong ilog uh, the problems in the community or the vulnerabilities identified were problems with regard to solid waste management. So they identify these as flood hazards, no? so because the drainage become clogged and then the area becomes flooded. So these are photos taken by the community members. And again, similar with the two other pre two previous barangays, they also mentioned about pathways and spaghetti wirings in the area. As for capacities, it's the same, uh, but for Bagong Ilog, they also highlighted, uh, despite you know pathways, there are also good spaces for uh, vegetation or gardens. No? So one of the participants uh, uh, considered this as a capacity, or also as a way to you know make the uh, alleyways more appealing to the, for the eyes. And they also identify the existing uh, vehicles and services available in the community. So after that, no, so after they were able to identify those, talk about share, uh, as for, for the capacities, no, they also identified the gaps. So for example, uh, in this capacity identified by Bagong Ilog, so they identified ambulances, fire trucks as capacities, but they also identified the gaps uh, within these capacities. One of the identified gaps was sometimes the ambulance was not able to reach uh, the, the, the one to be rescued because, again, the pathways were very small. That's a gap. And sometimes uh, the ambulance has no gas. No? So there were uh, sort of these uh, uh, 
stories that came out no? uh, when they were discussing or sharing these photos. So from there, from the vulnerabilities and the gaps identified, uh, they were able to develop an action plan. No? So how they could solve or how they could fill the gaps uh, or increase the capacities of these um, uh, the issues that they identified. So they focused on the main problems, they set up objectives, uh, possible action steps, persons responsible to take on the, uh, the activity, they set the time frames, the resources needed, barriers and solutions if they encounter ones, and possible collaborators. So let me share with you a sample of the action plan that was uh, created by uh, Barangay Ugong in Pasig City. Uh, these are all based on the uh, results of the photo voice and the other tools that we did uh, included in the toolkit. So one of the main problems they identified, uh, top one, these, are, these were also prioritized by the community members themselves, was about the parking, no? parking uh, of the... Uh, their lack of parking in the communities, which also uh, contributed to the you know difficult access because the roads were narrow and then there's some cars parked there, so it, it's uh, very very problematic for the community. No? Another one is uh, PWD and senior mapping. There is no existing location map for PWD and seniors, meaning that when in times of rescue, uh, the most vulnerable ones or the ones that they need to prioritize cannot be identified because there is no uh, way to identify them because there are no existing maps or tags in the household. So that's one issue uh, or one problem that came out from the uh, photo voice as well. So there is also a need for uh, sign language and medicine and signages when it comes to rescuing. So this was also uh, uh, identified by the community members. and. The issue of spaghetti wiring, no? it was uh, uh, also identified as a main uh, as a priority project or action to take up on by the members of the community. So from there, they developed uh, the problems. They also developed uh, action steps. No? So for, um, for the parking, they said they, it's important to have a meeting and they will make a proposal to the barangay to come up with ordinances about parking. For the PWD and senior mapping, they will conduct a meeting and also how to conduct this project and conduct a mapping activity in the community. Uh, for the PWD needs and signages, uh, they said they will write a proposal and uh, inform the UBC. Spaghetti wiring, inform the barangay, conduct meeting, and coordinate with authorized persons. No? So they also identified which persons they will coordinate with, which organizations, and a time frame was also set. So these were all done uh, by the community members. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So for the conclusions and uh, recommendations, no? so what we found out was that Photo Voice was found to be a successful community-based tool no? to capture and understand the vulnerabilities and capacities of community members with regard to inclusivity and DRR. So it is able to promote dialogue and knowledge about the importance of inclusivity within the community because we had some uh, feedback and realizations that were shared by the community members uh, the importance of having different sectors in this project and they are able to share the ex their experiences there is a like a co-learning uh, that is happening when, when, they, when they conduct their sharing so these visual narratives uh, the visual and narrative results provide a stronger case no because it's visual no uh, it's different iba rin kasi pag nakikita mo yung picture no uh, it provides a stronger case in challenging policy makers in the state to further protect the rights of the most vulnerable sectors, the PWDs, uh, single parents, youth, in these high-risk communities. So the results became one of the talking points and references in the development of an inclusive community DRR action plan. 
So actually, uh, based on the one of the activities that the Barangay Ugong and the other barangays identified in regards to mapping, so we were also able to come up with uh, another innovation, an innovative project together with PGS that we called the Map Alahat Bakat. No? So to address the, one of their concerns about the mapping or tagging or identifying houses with, uh, uh, with persons with disabilities, uh, we conducted a mapathon for the members of the community so they could map uh, map the areas or houses with uh, persons with disabilities and also identify the uh, critical infrastructures in the area and I'd also identify the PW friendly and not PW friendly spaces in their communities. No? So this is an add-on. This actually became an add-on uh, innovation project based uh, on their action plan that they did. So we developed this together with PGS again. So with the results uh, of the photo voice project and the other activities in the Lahat Dapat Toolkit, uh, the next step of the project is to have the barangays no? to fully incorporate them into their respective barangay DRR plans. So the plan is, the original plan was uh, just to be an annex, these action plans to be an annex, but we will focus on September you know, to actually come up with a, uh, a workshop uh, to uh, assist them into incorporating these activities that they identified into their next Barangay DRM plan. So this will be conducted uh, this coming September um, with PGS and Salikayan Collective to have this uh, have these results, no? not just the photo voice, but also the results from the other toolkits and the mapping, map lahat dapat uh, project that we did, into you know synthesize them, into you know incorporate them into their uh, respective barangay DRRM plans. So yeah, uh, I guess that's it. No, uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, your questions, uh, and if you want to connect uh, with the with, with the team. Or you want to try out the tools if you want to comment uh, test it out and hopefully you know uh, connect us on our socials facebook and uh, instagram so yeah thank you very much All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Sir Boyan, for this very insightful talk of yours. I'm sure our audience has a lot of questions in store that are worthy to be discussed during our open forum. And, you know, this is uh, this method is an eye-opening for me <laughs> uh, personally um, in terms of uh, being used to um, uh, formulate uh, policies, inclusive policies in relation to disaster risk reduction, especially um, I'm also uh, involved in these kinds of projects. But um, uh, I would love to hear from you more about uh, in, about these initiatives in the future, especially in the, in the questions that our audience and I, I would also want to ask later. Okay, anyway, so speaking of that, uh, we will proceed uh, to the open forum. Uh, I would like to encourage our audience to uh, type in your questions, your comments, and or reactions to the presentation of Sir Boyet. Okay, so before um, we uh, um, accommodate some questions um, from the Zoom chat box or in various platforms, I'd like to ask uh, this question, Sir Boyet, since uh, you were talking about uh, photos in general are very much powerful in terms of, you know, um, sending a message. Um, in, in all in all in all aspects people are saying that you know um um pictures are you know uh, evoking uh certain messages very strong messages um it, it shows a thousand a thousand of words as, as they as they say so i'd like to ask um how can their researcher ensure that the meanings behind the images are not lost or over analyzed for example, sometimes the context may be lost since the photo cannot capture the scene in its entirety, like for, ins for instance, selective focus of these photos. So this question is coming from uh, a member of our audience. Yeah. Would you like to address that soon? Yeah, so that's where the voice in the photo voice comes in. No? So these are not just visual uh, data. No? So these are photos with 
uh, kumbaga, may kaakibat na mga kwento from the community members. So, it is important to also uh, look at that aspect. Uh, each each participant uh, shares no? shares his or her story about the photo that he took. And this is where the researcher uh, comes in, no? his expertise on note-taking and uh, looking for common themes comes in. No? So, as the researcher, as the participant is... Um, presenting no? so it, it takes down notes of keywords and common themes that comes out from the participants which is also which which will also help him in the clustering part of the of the activity so after each participant was able to present individually they go back together as a group you no know, they uh, organize or they they set up themes uh, like common topics that uh, they think are common uh, within the group no so again those are the like what i showed earlier showed earlier the common themes were narrow alleyways no? the spaghetti wiring and these are th these themes were developed by the participants themselves so but that's one way to you know not uh, uh, uh what you were saying earlier uh, over generalize or uh, the data that we have So in, in connection to that question, uh, I, um, a member of our audience also asked this. Uh, since we are talking about messages and the, uh, photos are worth thousands of words, etc. So in what ways these pictures taken through photo voice were able to shape or influence DRR policies at across scales, for example, at the community level? Sorry. I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat that? Uh, in in what in what ways do these pictures uh, taken through photo voice were able to shape or even influence uh, barangay disaster risk reduction plans? Yeah, uh, I'm think I'm trying to think of an example uh, because uh, maybe not uh, not in this particular project, but on another uh, photo voice project, um, which also related to disaster. The way that the photos affected uh, actually the planning part was they could see it. Eh. Uh, again, it's a form of evidence. No? So, for example, the spaghetti wiring, the spaghetti wiring, the narrow alleyways, uh, you can just say that verbally to the barangay captain or barangay tanod. Uh, ito, cap, we have problems. But when you actually have photos to show that these are the actual uh, situation on, in the barangay, then it can really uh, it, it provides a stronger case no, to uh, to for the barangay to take action or to plan about how they can improve uh, this certain situation. So again, that's uh, that's one example also uh, of how the power again the power of photographs, the power of photographs in making a stronger case and uh, getting your story uh, or experience to the higher ups. It's, it's like um and it's like an evidence you no know, for for them to take action since yeah. uh these there are pictures that would tell them that this is the real situation on the ground therefore um people would want to uh you know um what would want the barangay to to do something about what uh what they are experiencing based on those photos so thank you very much for that sir Boyet. uh in connection to that uh, in your experience uh, in doing um photo voice uh projects um through uh through the years to what extent do you think uh, this method is used as a way to hold policymakers um accountable in implementing drr policies at for example at the barangay level or at the community level and just you know, just in your experience, uh, since you mentioned earlier about you know uh, uh, holding policymakers into uh, holding holding them into account, so to what extent can we hold them through this method? Yeah, uh, uh, but actually, it's not. Uh, that's why we. It's a very good tool for for DRR, especially DRR practitioners. You no, know, this particular tool. It's not really that mainstream at the moment because uh, when you look at photo voice projects in different areas, in different countries, it's mainly used for health. Uh, 
uh, it's used for health uh, studies uh, it is only i think there are only a few uh, activities uh, with using photovoice in disaster uh, related activities so i guess uh, you know if we are able to uh, mainstream or if we're able to uh, incorporate it this particular method I know it's, it's uh, when you look at it, it's kind of uh, uh, lengthy. Uh, it's very complex because you have to go back and forth in the communities. But the result naman is something that's very uh, strong and something that's very visual. And I think that's what lacks then in our barangay plans. Because no? uh, uh, they're all text no? usually. No? There's no... Uh, case studies within the community that shows that we developed this plan because these are the things that are happening and this is a way to you know make it make our drr plans make our barangay plans more uh, not just inclusive but uh, more visual more uh, that people can you know appreciate also you know, because drr plans should also be read you know should also be understood by the common uh, community member and having photos with them I think helps with that and when you understand the plans of your community uh, whether you are a normal or average member of the community if you know the plans of your community then uh, most, most likely it's, uh, you will survive you know, in any disaster situation and I guess uh, that's one way to improve uh, our disaster plans uh, make it more visual using this particular approach yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Boyet, for that. Um, in relation to um, in, in the issue of on the on the question of inclusivity, um, can anyone use photo voice as a research method or tool, despite having no experience in photography, for instance, or not being tech savvy? Like, you know, uh, they don't have mobile phones, or if they, or even uh, they have mobile phones, um, they're not able to fully utilize the features of those uh, mobile phones. So uh, can, en can anyone uh, use uh, photo voice yeah. as a method? So. Yep, uh, that's the beauty of photography. You know? Photography is for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, even, the, even the blind can take photos. There is also, if you search on it, there's also blind photography. You know? So it doesn't limit anyone. Uh, we have uh, participants uh, aging eight, eight years old to as young as seven years old. So the cameras that they use uh, can be as simple as a point-and-shoot camera. No? So you just wind and then you shoot. No focusing, no whatever. Uh, actually, it's easier in a on a mobile phone because you can just tap and click. No? And I guess most people nowadays are very... Uh, sanay na rin sila sa mga mobile phones. Uh, so there is no limitation uh, that I can see. Uh, based on our experience uh, in conducting these activities uh, on the use of photography uh, or the use of photo voice. Uh, I guess it all just depends on the medium. Uh, so the medium of photography that we use. Because uh, in, in, in this project, we use uh, film cameras. No? So film cameras, kasi, uh, one of the reasons why we opted, or I personally uh, like to use film cameras or point and shoot cameras or photo voice project because they can't delete it eh. and then they think about what uh, what they shoot so for example i give this camera to a person uh, okay ito yung gagawin ko i will document and i know that i have limited shots so i should take shots that are you know worth taking no? Kumbaga, uh, compared to a mobile phone na unlimited shot lang ng shot no? And may mga times baka madelete. Yung madelete na shot ay baka yung pala yung mahalaga para sa para sa'yo as a researcher. No? And baka madidelete nila yun. And another thing is it give them, gives them a sense of responsibility when you lend something to them. Uh, uh, compared sa, okay, use your own mobile phone to take photos. Uh, personally, baka ako pag sinabihan ng ganun, uh, pwedeng tama rin ako kasi may marami akong ginagawa sa phone ko internet but when you lend a camera to them no uh, it gives them a responsibility na okay may pinahiram sa akin kailangan ko tong gawin and uh, mas mataas yung 
uh, kumbaga yung chances mo to for them to complete the project. So that's one of the also the reasons uh, why we sometimes choose to use the medium of film in uh, photo, photo voice projects. So, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, generally clear use since uh, you, you mentioned about um, deleting photos from uh, mobile phones. Kasi parang ano siya, uh, uh, parang it, it, it also matters. No? Um, what was the implication, for instance, if a person who's using that mobile phone uh, deletes photos from that uh, mobile phone and in terms of, let's say, yung findings or yung... Um, or or, or in, the, in the project in general what, what what could be the implication if uh if the user of that mobile phone deletes photos and and, tell, and kumbaga uh, pinili lang niya kung yung, ito yung importante siguro what what could be the implication of that so, yeah. so we haven't really experienced that from what i know no kasi nga dinelete eh. so hindi ko alam kung <laughs> so kung, kung di ba di naman sasabi niya sa akin na may dinelete siya pero I guess yeah, it affects din yung ano yung veracity or yung uh, yung quality ng data na makukuha mo. You, you wouldn't know kasi yun nga dinilit nga eh, di ba? So, pero again, what if what parang what if na lang yun, no? What if yung dinilit pa lang na photo ay napakaganda pala ng gustong kunan pero dahil dinilit niya kasi hindi maganda yung itsura. Kasi we, we experienced that as well eh. Uh, ang una nilang sasabihin Uh, sir, pangit yung mga kinuha ng picture. Eh, actually, hindi naman, in-explain namin na, hindi naman yun yung, hindi naman ito pagandahan. No? Hindi siya pagandahan ng kung gano'ng kaganda yung kuha mo. What's important is yung story mo, no? What's yung, kung ano yung experience mo, and yung, yun nga, yung reality mo na kinunan mo. So, very important na uh, sinasabi rin namin sa kanila yun na it's not about the aesthetics uh, or the beauty of the photo, but uh, the story behind it, yun yung mas important para sa amin. So, I guess yun. Alright, sir. Thank you uh, so much for that. Um, there are a few, a few questions uh, left uh, before uh, we conclude. No? Um, the photos that you've shown are, are very nice. So, this is from Dr. Jake Kadag. The photos that you've shown in the presentation are very nice and it shows risk visually. Pero kaya ba gawin na sila lang sa community na walang outside facilitator? Baka kailangan ng guidebook or primer para madaling gamitin ng mga NGO. What, what do you think of that, sir? Yeah, yep. Uh, yes, kaya siya. Uh, actually, yan yung next na namin na step. This September ay mag-conduct ng training of trainers with, uh, different, with the barangays and interested barangays in Pasig. So, we plan to train them on how to use the different tools doon sa aming toolkit included na yung photo voice. So, uh, very, ano siya, uh, simple lang siya to facilitate this kind of project kasi nga yun, ano siya eh, uh, community-based. So, uh, babantay ka lang, they all do the, the activities themselves, the community members. So, it's possible to have someone from the community to conduct this kind of uh, method. And yeah, a guidebook or a primer is possible no, para mas magamit siya ng NGOs. Alright. So, take, take, uh, so, thank you very much for that, sir. Um, are there plans to streamline with higher levels of risk governance? This is from um, Ryan Viado. Yeah. So, uh, for passing, sir, we're also trying to involve the mayor, no, the Pasig City uh, City Disaster Risk Reduction Office uh, about our tools, not just the photo voice, but the other tools in our toolkit. So this will, this is ongoing po, uh, the uh, discussions and meetings through our partners sa ACAP Federation because ACAP Federation, Pasig has uh, has own DRR officers, meron silang board din sa city. So, we're coursing ito through them. So, we will update din po siguro uh, about kung maging kamusta siya. And if you also plan then uh, to connect us, uh, we'll be happy rin to, to, to make it more, uh, to streamline it uh, in higher offices. 
All right, sir. Thank you for, for that. Uh, this question is from uh, Danielle Cotilla. Uh, good day. We are also doing a very similar project with, a, with an urban poor community in Quezon City, wherein photographs and narratives were used to help the community to tell their story of resistance against land dispossession, as well as dispel wrong stereotypes against the poor. Now, we are still in the process of trying to or sorry, now we are still in the stage of trying to process them with the community, figuring out how to tell the story to the public in a creative and cohesive manner. So far, we have managed to classify them by theme. Are there other things to consider in telling stories through paragraph, uh, photographs rather? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention this earlier because we haven't done it yet dito sa photo voice project na to. But the importance of ha holding a community exhibit. So it's not just for everyone, but try to conduct an exhibit then within the community. I say it's also a form of validation when it comes to research. I say uh, a community exhibit that the community members, participants themselves, uh, set up. So participatory pa rin dapat yung maging approach ng pag-conduct nila ng, ng exhibit. And in a way, uh, have the community members who are not participants to view, to view itong exhibit na ito and to also make uh, comments about it. So I think that's uh, one one way also to complete the story kasi participants naman natin, hindi naman uh, lahat involved. But uh, it's very important to have this data validated and one way to do it is to conduct an, an exhibit. So I guess uh, I'm very interested din dun sa project ni Sir Daniel. Uh, mukhang interesting yung topic nyo. And uh, if you need uh, inputs from me, uh, just contact uh, our team or me. Uh, very interested also to assist and to observe them inside the project. Thank you very much for that, uh, Sir Ryan. Um, are there any questions from the members of the audience? Um, before we end. I think uh, Professor Darlene Gutierrez has a question. Would you like to raise your question, ma'am? Go ahead, Paul. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, TJ. And uh, thank you, Boyet, for that uh, very interesting uh, lecture. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, you're using film camera, right? Uh, would there be, because between the film camera and uh, the digital camera, no? Siyempre, mas mura kasi ang cost ng digital camera. No? Lalo na pag, lalo na mga mobile phones na pwede mong gamitin. Yeah. No? Now, may difference ba in terms of yung uh, voices no? from these photos to uh, using a film camera and a digital camera? Although, kanina meron ka rin no na uh, by the use of a film camera, kailangan mo talagang pipiliin yung mga mga uh, tag dito, yung mga scenes no na kukuhanan mo however hindi kaya magiging limitation yan in terms of the number of photos that you would like to take using a film camera considering the the cost no kasi uh, actually i've been trying to to look also for films <laughs> wala akong mahanap so saan kayo nakakabili no? Uh, para may supply mo doon sa sa gamit niyo sa project niyo no? So yan din ang isa. So um, hindi kaya yan uh, after you leave the barangay no pag natapos na yung project no. Paano niyo ma-assure ma ang continuity ng inyong proyekto no? If you if you still uh like dito um, use or you, you still let them use the film camera. Eh, yun, yun lang yung, yung concern ko doon, no? Sa, sa ano lang, sa yes, process. Uh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, yan din po yung limitation din on using film. Kasi very, ano siya eh, uh, complex. No? Very, kung, lalo pag uh, walang masyadong time, yung researcher, yung facilitator. Kasi, once you collect the cameras, you have, need to have it developed and you have to go back, you know, have it printed, you have to go back. Uh, where in sa pag digital, yun nga, instant. Pwede, after nila mag-photo, send nila sa'yo, print. 
uh, pero in terms of uh, voices or yung quality what you've noticed naman ay uh, wala po kaming nakita uh, difference in terms of uh, the quality of the voices or yung narratives nila mas more on lang talaga dun sa uh, participation uh, kasi nga yun uh, pagka phone mas maraming pag sinabing gamitin yung mobile phone to take photos mas maraming hindi tumutuloy hindi namin sure kung dahil nga ba yun nga uh, ano ba yung pagkakaiba nun na kapag binigyan mo sila ng camera as responsibility as compared to gamitin mo yung phone mo to take photos medyo pinag-aaralan pa rin po namin kung yung ganung comparison pero in terms of input uh, using the mobile mobile po yung na-try namin and film um, wala po pinagkaiba we were able still able to uh, they were still able to generate uh, very important data and output or narratives uh, for their plans um yung sabihin ko yun, yun lang naman yung sa in terms of medium. Tapos yung sa supply naman po, yung sa film camera, uh, there's a resurgence again of film cameras sa, uh, alo sa Southeast Asia. Uh, nauso ulit yung plaka, yung mga luma no, bumabalik. So, yung film cameras po, uh, available siya sa mga Fuji film stores, sa mga malls, and uh, marami na rin po nagbabenta online. Uh, and there are different uh, developing labs na rin across the country na mga bago. And yun po. So, in terms of uh, where to buy and where to develop, if you need help po, we can assist naman po doon. There are a lot in Quezon City. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Boyet. No? Pero are you giving also your uh, yung, yung respondents or you know, barangay residents an option to use their mobile phone? Uh... Or talagang tried, film no, camera lang talaga. No, we haven't. Uh, oh. Film camera. Ay, ay, yun po yung na-mention. Nakalimutan ko. And kasi yung, uh, we also, pag film camera kasi yung ginamit, mas, actually, for personal ano lang, medyo mas aesthetic yung dating eh. Uh, ano mo ma-explain? Mas, mas raw. Uh, kung baga, yung film, kung how he actually took it at that moment, mas makakapture mo. In terms, ito mas medyo on art. Uh, yung artistic side na po niya no, ng photo kasi ano siya eh, yung point and shoot lang talaga kung how, how, he see, how he or she saw it how he, parang yun na yun no, when it comes to using these uh, film cameras kasi nga hindi nila nakikita yung uh, output nila and again we're also reiterating sa kanila naman na um, it's not really about the photo but the story behind it no? so it's very important that we stress that so, para hindi rin sila ma-pressure while they take the photos. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Gutierrez. Um, in the interest of time, uh, we have to uh, conclude our open forum, but there are some comments that I would like to read. Uh, maybe, Sir Boyet, would you, uh, would you want to respond that through our Zoom chat box? So that uh, we can address it to the to the uh, members of the audience. So uh, Paula Tayo mentioned here there is a global sh shortage of film and some resellers really mark up the price. Such so as what she said. And then uh, Mr. Ryan Viado also added here with unlimited photos taken through mobile devices, the bias may be generalized. Participants may just take photos indiscriminately. So that's uh, that's also his comment on that. So, um, would you like, sir, to, to address uh, that use, uh, through our Zoom chat box uh, since yeah, so uh, we, we, are, uh, we are about to conclude our program? Thank you very much again. So that's all for now. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Boy, for sharing your time and expertise with us. And also, I would like to thank our um, audience for their active participation in our discussion this afternoon. Now to show our appreciation, the Philippine Geographical Society would like to present this certificate to our speaker. So this certificate of appreciation is given to uh, Juan Miguel Torres for the valuable insights and expertise shared as a virtual resource speaker for the talk, using photo voice as a community-based participatory tool in developing inclusive barangay disaster risk reduction strategies. 
as part of the Philippine Geographical Society lecture series held on July 25th, 2022, signed by Professor Joseph Padis, Chair of the UP Department of Geography, and Professor Emmanuel Garcia, the President of the Philippine Geographical Society. So once again, uh, thank you very much, Sir Boyard, for joining us this afternoon. We have learned a lot uh, from your talk, and we look forward to have you again in the future. So thank you very much, Sir, for, for being with us. And with that, we are now gearing towards the end of our program. I would like to call on Professor Joseph Padis, the Chair of the UP Department of Geography, to give his closing remarks. Thank you very much, TJ. Thank you very much, uh, um, Boyet, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I, I'm a little bit biased because I was in all three of those areas. Uh, although I I uh, man managed the geonarratives project part, I did see um, parts of the photo voice that uh, Boyet and his um, uh, colleagues did to those communities. So wonderful. I'm just going to make three, uh, make the four, four points. And these are something that I scribbled down when you were right, uh, <clears throat> delivering your talk, but also as a result from some of the questions that arise from this uh, uh, presentation. The first one is uh, definitely photo voice is very enabling and empowering, and it does come out in the word cloud that was that resulted from from the participants' own reaction when they hear the word photo voice, right? So, it's enabling, it's empowering, and and in a way to to gain agency to provide some kind of uh, um, um, how would you call this? Uh, maybe some kind of yeah. To, to use the same word again, agency over the data that you collected uh, is definitely that. Um, that's the first one. The second one is um, um, I'm kind of two minds about this particular thing about shooting film as opposed to the use of the cell phone. And of course, this is something that the, it's not much. It's not really a question as much as this comment that maybe Celica and Collective can think about in the future. Or maybe just to you know to think about that as a way to expand your own project and maybe to to occasionally critically reflect on the methodologies that you use. But for example, I said I'm of two minds because on the one hand, shooting a film a, a film that is now almost defunct, but as you, as Boy had said, um, is now coming back uh, uh, in the marketplace again. Shooting a film. Uh, could also allow for people to only choose the image. So before they could just shoot whatever, excuse me, image that they wanted to present, they will have to think carefully because there's there's also the, the rarity involved, or, or sorry, not the rarity, but more like the, uh, the, uh, the, the film has an end. It's not unlimited, right? So... So on the other hand, allowing probably for the cell phone might democratize uh, um, the process. You know, the, now with the millennials and the Gen Z generations uh, who are probably more, you know, they're definitely digital native. And I say that as a digital immigrant, uh, uh, they are digital natives who understand the language of image and the power with which they can tell stories. Now, I wonder if that could also be an interesting alternative, maybe something to trial, where they can just out of the thousands of photos that they, they chose, which one would they choose uh, themselves, right? Allow them to choose which one they would choose, even if their basis is aesthetic or something else, but but maybe that in itself is an acknowledgement of voice, you know, their own agency and voice. Um, the, the third one is more of a comment, really, and it's not really meant as a question, although it, it may come out like a question. And I've spoken to this with some colleagues, notably Dr. Uh, Professor Skydag and Garcia, and also the members of the colleague from Geography. We, we constantly struggle with this, but, but how inclusive is inclusive? And, and let me just say that I fully, fully support Lahat Dapat, not only because I'm, I'm partly part of that endeavor, but also because I believe in its mandate in including uh, this. I say that because in some cases of the uh, P3DM that uh, my colleague Eman Garcia has done in the past, um, there's also this question of, of who gets to go, who, who, who represents the community, really. So, so the choice of who gets to be part of the community to represent 
the uh, senior citizen, the PWD, LGBT, all kinds of sectors within the community get to have a say, you know, while others may not be able to just because they are not members of that group or they are not chosen to represent, you know. Um, uh, uh, let, me, let me answer me, <laughs> my question by saying that maybe that's the reason because people who are volunteering are those who are open to the project. But something that that we can also think about how inclusive is inclusive, um, how how do we go about choosing members who are usually not active members of, of that particular sector? But that would be a kind of a, as they call it a crapshoot. You know what I mean? Is is like it could go either way, right? So just something to think about. And finally, uh, I totally support this whole idea of what I would call co-created co-created curation, wherein you go back to the community, have an exhibit and show it to them, you know? Um, so, so instead of say, for example, curating something for them, um, maybe it might be good to ask them how they would want to tell their stories, right? So again, it goes back to Danielle's own question earlier about, you know, creating themes, maybe ask them what themes they wanted to talk about. And, and and go from there uh, rather than so that we can eliminate this idea of, of you imposing your own view but rather what do you think they are but be there for their questions if needed because you are um uh, you know you 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 have extra training you know, in order to do that but definitely that and that's a struggle for many of us researchers who had to go back to the field and 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 show again the data you gathered all throughout uh, to the community and see what it feels like. And in, we're not even there for the agreement, not at all. I don't think agreement or consensus is the point. It's for them to actually talk and never think of, of debate and discussion as a negative, but rather as a way to open new windows and opportunities and invite confidences and, and, and come closer to the ground truth. So all those things that I mentioned is just to applaud that, that but uh, initiative and and the Selikine Collective and and this project that um, um, that Boyet, uh, Eric, uh, uh, Astrid have been uh, working on for for several months and uh, uh, we hope to hear from this uh, as you also discover certain things you can hone in the photo voice that was first introduced by those two scholars in 1992 and produce a much more maybe, I don't want to say Filipino as though Filipino is just one signifier, right? But a much more specific kind of, 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 of photo voice that suited to disaster that, that you developed. I think that would be a good contribution to knowledge, good contribution to methodology. And, and I already applaud you in advance for that direction in the future. So thank you very much, Boya. Thank you for the talk and thank you for the questions. Um, let me just say that uh, for the month of August, we invited uh, um, Professor uh, Felipe Hocano Jr. from the UP Department of Anthropology to talk about the performative aspect of Arnis, himself a practitioner as well as a scholar who does this. So it should be an interesting talk uh, uh, too. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Padis, uh, for that. Uh, now, before we end, the Philippine Geographical Society has an open call for membership. You can visit www.phgeographicalsociety.org for more details. Also, if you want to revisit the past sessions of the PGS lecture series, these can be found in the UP Department of Geography YouTube channel. To talk about the upcoming International Conference on Geographical Sci Studies or 2022, I would like to call once again, Professor Joseph Padis. Those two dogs were here and they're, they're close by. So let me just tell you that this intriguing set of advertisements and publicity materials that the Philippine Geographical Society has been sending rather mysteriously to our, to our social media, um, uh, were the brainchild of uh, Professor Dominic Sasha Amorsolo, who managed to combine um, uh, the, the more than human aspect of, 
of uh, geography as well as and of course spoiler alert the the theme that we are uh, talking about this year which is emotional geography so it's non-performant sorry it's non-representational and it's uh, it's going to talk about various ways in which emotion uh, get to manifest landscape places and all kinds of endeavors Right. So it should should be a fun thing. The blurb is coming out soon, and we would really like you to um, participate by presenting a paper to our uh, International Conference on Geographical Studies, which we are doing in the second week of November of this year. And it's going to be uh, um, a combination of remote and and not. I'm not sure if I'm if 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 that's really the direction we're going, but we're still trying to see if, if there's a possibility for 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 a kind of blended version but remote definitely so the 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 call for papers will be out uh, uh shortly and of course by shortly i mean a few days and then and then yes uh, we will we will read them carefully and 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 suggest changes if necessary if we really like the paper otherwise you know we would really like it to be much more in keeping with emotional geographies. And all of us have that from, from the sessions we have from photo voice to disaster planning to uh, geo narratives to the current mid year uh, geography 192 that professors uh, uh, Oni Martinez and Dom Somersola are doing are imbued with all kinds of affective um, uh, inter uh, relationalities between researcher in the community and the people they work with so i hope you get a chance to become part of this wonderful endeavor that we're we're doing for this um upcoming icgs in november thank you